Um, and I will make, um, I will make, um, uh, I will make this, uh, the, the slide deck available to all of you as well. Um, so just please go ahead, ask me any questions. Um, I'll cover them at the end of the presentation. And now we're going to get started. Um, so my name is Alessandra. I'm the director of marketing here at Green Rope. Um, and again, today we're just going to cover quality over quantity in selecting the right social network for your business and sort of the social media trends as they are right now, mid-2014. So let's start with the big one, Facebook. So as of now, there are 1.28 billion monthly active users. That's a huge user base. Um, there's 50 million business Facebook pages. Um, the most common reason a person unlikes a page is boring content. 75% um, of engagement happens in the first five hours content is posted. Um, so, you know, your, your content has a shelf life. Um, so you really want to promote and actively gain engagement um, within that first five hours of you posting that content. And that's another reason why it's really important to find out to determine when your best times are for posting content. Um, you know, when your users are particularly active. And Facebook um, Analytics actually has some great insight on that. So um, if you've noticed on your Facebook page, there is, you know, a tab that says insights. I would definitely take a look at those, see what times um, you're getting the most engagement and post accordingly. 23% uh, of Facebook users, users log in at least five times per day. Um, that's a lot of logging into Facebook um, and that's a lot of chances for exposure for your brand. 47% uh, of Americans say Facebook is their number one influencer um, as far as purchases. That's a really big number. Um, and so it just goes to show you how important social media is when it comes to influencing a buyer's decision. 70% um, of marketers use Facebook to gain new customers. Um, again, that's a really big percentage. Um, and it's something that, you know, all of you um, as marketers, as sales execs, as business owners should really take into account um, because there's a lot of potential um, with Facebook to increase exposure, um, expand your reach, um, you know, especially with so many, um, you know, and, it, and also internally, think about your internal team and the network that you have between you guys so you know if each of your team members is on Facebook you know you should really be promoting them to be sharing and liking all of your business posts um, because the more engagement you have the more likely that um, the more likely you are to expand your reach to you know users and contacts that you may not have uh, been able to reach before Google Plus um, this is actually one of my um, newest um, favorite social networks, if you will. Um, it's incredibly important for, um, it's incredibly important for SEO. Um, and it's also a very engaging, very fun um, network to be a part of. Um, with the use of Google Hangouts, Google Plus Communities, um, there's so much, um, there's so much conversation going on. And it's a very quickly growing social network. Um, and this is something that I, you know, people, you know, were, are less inclined to set up Google Plus pages because it is a little bit of a lesser known, um, lesser known social network, but it is um, up and coming. And because it is Google, it's a very important to be a part of. Um, currently, there are 540 million active users. Um, it's growing at 33% per year. That which is a pretty huge number and 53% of interaction between Google Plus users and brand um, and a brand is positive. Um, so there's a lot of great positive conversations going on between, you know, leads, customers, your brand, brands together. Um, so it's, it's a it's a great place to to create communities and to develop, develop your network, um, both for retail and business. Um, so B2C and B2B. Twitter, 255 million monthly active users. 
Uh, 46% of users tweet at least once a day. Uh, that's actually really, I was actually pretty surprised by this stat um, because I know how many bots and fake accounts there are out there. Um, but the fact that 46% of users are tweeting at least once per day uh, means that it remains still a very active network and, an, uh, and a network that you want to be able to join in on the conversation. 34% uh, of marketers use Twitter to su successfully generate leads. Um, I can absolutely say that here at GreenRope, we are definitely um, part of that 34%. Um, Twitter has made a lot of new changes, making the platform more visual and engaging. engaging. Um, so I'm not sure um, whether you look at the platform uh, via mobile or desktop, um, but if you have recently, you'll notice that there are a lot of, um, it is a much more visual platform since so much content is going, um, is moving towards, um, you know, being very image heavy and visual. Uh, Twitter has followed, followed suit, so you can easily access, um, your images are no longer in links, they pull up right as you're scrolling through your news feed. LinkedIn, 187 million monthly active users. Uh, LinkedIn reaches a total of 200 countries and territories geographically. The percentage of people spending over seven plus hours a week on LinkedIn rose from 11 to 18 percent last year. Uh, what does this show? This shows that people are finding a great value in LinkedIn. Um, posting individual status updates as a favorite feature rose from 10% to 39%, which means a lot more people are using it to not only publish and promote their content, um, but also using their own news feeds to see what other people are posting as well. Um, blogging. 6.7 million people blogging via blogging sites. Uh, that's a lot of blogs. 23% uh, of inter internet time is spent on blogs and social networks. Uh, companies with a blog have 97% more inbound links than others. That's a huge percentage. Um, so having a blog attached to your website is and publishing and sharing your content that you post on your blog is a huge, huge benefit um, and should definitely be something that all of you should be engaging with no matter, no matter what type of business you have. Um, B2B marketers are using blogs. Um, using blogs generate 67% more leads. Again, that's a huge percentage. Um, you know, blogging is so great for your organic search. Um, blogging is so great to drive visitors to your website. It's great for thought leadership. It's great for exhibiting your ex expertise and educating and connecting and building trust with your clients. So now we're going to talk about, um, you know, the different social networks and how they, um, you know, and whether they're right for your business. Um, we're going to go through, you know, obviously the big four, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, and then I'll, you know, talk a little bit about the more um, niche networks as well. So Twitter and Facebook. Uh, Twitter and Facebook remain, of course, um, you know, the top players in the social landscape. Um, an active presence on these networks gives you access to a tremendous network of people um, that you may not have been able to um, to to reach out to um, or may not have had access to in the past. Um, and on top of that, there are so many tools using using you know Facebook Graph and Twitter's search, um, you know keyword search. Um, you're able to hone in on very particular conversations um, that people are having in your industry. Now, I personally think that both Twitter and Facebook are incredibly important for both B2C and B2B. I am one of those uh, marketers that truly believes that instead of, you know, th that there's not a huge um, line between B2B and B2C. Um, you know, I really view marketing in a lot of ways as P2P. It's person to person because no matter what, whether you're a B2B marketer or a B2C marketer, you're still interacting and engaging with people. This is, this is a people to people. That is what social networks are all about. Um, Twitter is incredibly powerful for both B2C and B2B. And Facebook, of course, it depends on the industry, but it's it's this is another one. I think that everyone should have a Facebook page um, as well as a Twitter account. Um, the search on all of these is critical um, and enables you, like I said, to expand your reach um, as well as SEO, um, you know, organic search results. You'll notice that, you know, if you search for a company many times, both their Facebook, their Twitter, their LinkedIn and their Google Plus profiles will show up um, on that first page. Um, 
Google+. So Facebook and Twitter signals don't contribute directly to SEO. Um, they do, um, of course, having that social network and connecting all of your accounts together will have um, influence on your SEO, but it doesn't, but, you know, posting on either of these networks doesn't necessarily attribute to your SEO. Um, but this fact reinforces the importance of the Google Plus profile. Why? Well, it belongs to Google. Um, and who runs, um, and who basically dominate search Google. So taking a full advantage of your Google Plus plot, the you know your Google Plus business page is going to be huge for your SEO. Um, also Google Plus tends to prioritize your Google Plus posts and status updates. So I would definitely you know continuously post um, and again I think Google Plus is great for both um, B2C and B2B mainly because of its SEO uh, benefits. Um, now another thing, and I spoke about this in um, in my last webinar that was talking about content um, and developing a content strategy. But Google Plus authorship is a huge benefit of Google Plus, and what this means is, we, uh, and I'm sure all of you have seen when you do a Google search for an article or for some topic, you know some of the first results that you have up there have a little picture next to them, a headline, as well as maybe a little blurb of what that particular um, article is about. Well, that is due to Google authorship. And so Google authorship basically says that this, that you are the um, original author of that particular piece of content. Now, Google authorship um, is really easy to set up. Um, and I can send everyone the link um, after this webinar of, you know, a how to on how to set up your Google authorship. And um, another thing you'll want to do, which I can also show you kind of a, um, a live demonstration of as well, is in your Google Plus profile, you'll see on the right hand side when you scroll down, there's a place that says contributing or contributor. And you're going to want to put any blog, so your website blog that you contribute to. Um, this will also help your Google, your Google authorship and your Google mark, um, your authorship markup. Um, another benefit of Google Plus is to use Hangouts to foster robust discussions about new tech, product launches, and more. Um, so Hangouts are a great way to connect with other people in your industry, maybe have short discussions. You can also do Hangouts on air. Um, you can have panel discussions. Um, and it's a way for you to reach out to maybe other businesses in your industry um, or perhaps even, you know, it key influencers um, in your industry. Maybe you want to do an interview. Maybe you just want to, you know, trigger and um, inspire a discussion. Um, Hangouts are a great and easy way to do so. Um, integrate features such as communities and video for a richer user experience. Um, Google Plus communities uh, work a lot like LinkedIn groups. Um, they're incredibly powerful for, again, expanding your reach. SEO, um, and then of course building your, um, expanding your outward network. Um, there's a lot, there's, you can find Google Plus communities on pretty much every topic out there. Um, I would suggest joining a few um, and starting, starting to explore what kind of communities out there are out there and try to explore what sort of communities um, you should be um, you should be joining for your particular business and the more and I'm not saying to spend a ton of time um, doing so but I think that um, in the long run putting in um, you know, spending some time in the beginning to develop a strong um, to you know, kind of hone in on particular communities that you'd like to actively engage in will be beneficial in the long run, um, both for SEO as well as driving traffic to your site. LinkedIn. Um, so LinkedIn is very B2B. That is the one network that I will say um, is highly focused on B2B, uh, B2B marketers. And I think that, um, and I would, if you have, again, limited resources, I would definitely say focus on Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus before joining LinkedIn unless you um, have the resources uh, to do so. So LinkedIn remains the top network for business-focused social media marketers. Having an active presence isn't enough, though. B2B marketers need to think about creative ways to leverage innovative features. Um, for example, the news feed. Uh, LinkedIn's newsfeed has become a content delivery machine. Um, 
you should be publishing your content on it and you should be sharing and liking other people's content. Um, I'm sure as um, you know, most of you have logged into LinkedIn, um, you'll actually be able to see on um, you know, the little flag on the upper right hand corner, you know, usually has a list of people who have viewed your pro profile, liked any of your updates. Um, you know, this is a very powerful tool to be able to see who's reading your updates, um, who's liking your discussions in groups. Um, and this way you can, um, you know, target those particular people perhaps, um, and, and get a good idea of what content that you post is most engaging. Um, publish your content. Uh, you can post slide shares, get your blog stream to LinkedIn, um, you know, and, you know, continuously pub publish content that you publish on other social networks on LinkedIn. Um, you know, it, they say that the more you post on LinkedIn, um, the more you're going to show up in people's newsfeed. Um, again, this is expanding your reach. Um, I, you know, the more people are, who are seeing your posts, they're looking at your profile, that drives traffic to your website. So utilize LinkedIn groups. Groups remain a great place for engagement and expanding the reach of your content. So you're only allowed to join up to 50 groups. And in my opinion, I'm a member of 50 groups. I can no longer um, join any more groups, which to me is unfortunate because I'm very active in LinkedIn groups. Um, LinkedIn groups have had a huge, um, huge effect on driving traffic to our website. Why? Because I'm constantly monitoring discussions and, in, and joining in on the discussion. Even if it's just a one to two sentence comment, you know, maybe sometimes longer, maybe I start discussions. Just um, because some of these groups that you, you know, become a part of have over 100,000 followers. So when you publish your content or when you comment on a discussion within a group with over 100,000 followers, you are expanding your profile. You are showing your profile to that many people, um, which expand, which greatly expands your network. Now, of course, not everyone's going to, to see that, but I, for one, get every day in my inbox all of the discussions happening in each of those groups, so I can monitor which of those discussions I'd like to chime in on. And you know, then I can go ahead, chime in, or and then I get follow-up comments to see if anyone else has commented on discussions that I've contributed to, um, commented on, etc. This and, and I've been able to interact and engage with a lot of different people on LinkedIn, um, just from um, and, and with people that I never ever thought that I would even interact with. Um, due to my active engagement on LinkedIn, um, and again. This, the active and more active engagement, the more people are going to view your profile. And of course, your profile must be optimized to have your website and you want your all of your content published on there so that when they go to their site, they already know what they're looking at. That's going to decrease your bounce rate um, and potentially, you know, turn convert those visitors into leads and your leads into customers. Um, so sorry about this. This is kind of a text heavy slide, but I know that a lot of people have been asking about Pinterest and Instagram um, and Snapchat. Um, and these are all very, um, these are all image based platforms. Um, so Pinterest is a, you know, is primarily a tool to connect with consumers, but it also plays a role in the B2B world. Um, you know, it, you know, posting infographics. And again, like I said, there's a fine line between B2C and B2B because what it really comes down to is P2P, people to people. So, you know, Pinterest may not be your most prominent network and we'll, and we'll talk about more about, you know, honing in on the networks that are most beneficial for you. Um, but Pinterest can be very powerful for B2B marketers. Um, and here's why. Every brand has a visual angle and what you need to do is find that visual angle. So, you know, here I have a couple examples. You know, it might be showcasing your products or your zany behind the scenes office culture. So many people are talking about the behind the scenes, getting to know the company. Um, what does this company stand for? What are um, their employees like? Um, you know, people like to see this stuff. That really gets people connected to a brand. The more connection you feel with a brand, the more likely you are to create a lo loyal tribe of followers and, um, you know, um, in customers that keep coming back for more. Um, 
Of course, all of your visuals, you really want to keep consistent with your branding. So if you have a logo on all of your um, images, if you use certain colors, if you use certain um, you know, particular images, you want to keep it consistent. You want to make them very visually stimulating, but you also want you know, your logo to look exactly the same. Um, you'd like your logo to be on, um, on each, on each uh, image. Those types of things create brand consistency. Um, again, leverage data and case studies to create infographics and other visual explorations of your work. I'm sure each and every one of you have looked at any number of infographics. Um, there's tools out there, like visually, um, that can help you uh, create infographics all by yourself, so you don't need, you know, gr graphic designers and all of this to create even the, you know, even, um, you know, basic infographics. Um, that, but they can be really useful to put on your website to use on Pinterest, um, Facebook, Google+. Um, infographics have a huge level of engagement. Um, and expand your understanding of branding. It goes beyond your logo and website, and instead helps answer the question, how can I visually tell the story of who we are, who we serve, and what impact our products and services have in the world? And that's what you can really do um, with your visual representation through you know, turning your case studies into, you know, like I said here, an infographic or even a short video. I'm um, doing video testimonials, um, visual, you know, video case studies. All of these types of, all of this type of content is really gaining a lot of momentum. So therefore, it is important to, you know, while you may not, you know, have a video editor and producer, um, you know, even short snippet videos that are really genuine go a long way. And in my opinion, they actually go much further than, um, you know, huge produced videos. Um, you know, these more personal videos, again, enhance that connection with the brand. They show the real deal, um, you know, the real life behind a brand, not some sort of Hollywood produced um, you know, depiction of what a brand is, but, you know, gets down to the nitty gritty. Who are you as a brand? What do your products do? And, you know, why do people, why would a person buy from you? So here are some tips for looking at which of, which of these networks that you may or may not be on are best for your brand. So the first step is to look at your existing profiles. Of your existing profiles, which are getting the most traction? Which are experiencing the most engagement? Um, traction can be measured in a number of ways, but always look at the variety of growth indicators. So this means is, you know, are, you know, what, what in social network is driving, you know, the most traffic to your website? Which is receiving the most engagement? Um, you know, are people actively sharing, um, are actively sharing your content? Um, you know, who, who, what is your busiest profile and where does all of your traffic come from? Or maybe your signups. Um, you know, some people have, you know, social signups, signup forms. Um, are you getting more signups on Facebook than you are on Google Plus or are you getting more on your blog? Um, so you have to look at these different metrics. And if you're using GreenUp, our, um, our analytics tool um, and our tracking under in the website uh, in the website module will tell you a lot about where your you know where most the, the majority of your traffic is coming from. Um, so followers and engagement. The size of your show, social account is less important important than engagement. And I cannot stress this enough. Um, it doesn't matter if you have a hundred thousand followers on Twitter and you get, are mentioned one time per week. Um, or people you're in a conversation twice, twice a week, twice a month. Um, but if you have a thousand followers and you're constantly engaged in ongoing conversations, that's a lot, that is a lot more beneficial to your business. It's showing that people are actually reading your tweets, retweeting your tweets, um, sharing your information and they're interested in what you have to say. Um, and this is what is going to drive people to your website. This is what's going to be, um, this is what is going to attract people to, to your brand, um, is the fact that you're engaging. Um, 
and again, I mean, I, I use Twitter as an example, but, you know, shares and likes um, is a very useful indicator of resonance. So if people are sharing your Facebook post, plus one in your Google Plus posts, um, sharing your LinkedIn updates, uh, you know, this is going to tell you a lot about the type of content that you're producing. And, of, and you know, definitely look okay, do you get more, um, you know, do you get more active engagements on LinkedIn or do you get more active um, engagement on Twitter and maybe not so much on Facebook? Well, the key is to finding where people are talking to you most and to focus in on those outlets. So traffic generation. So even if you're not spending much time on a specific ne network, it is possible that it's still sending traffic. Evaluate your website analytics, which is kind of what I was talking to about before, to understand whether social activity um, is a major driver of visits to your site. Um, so you want to know, and then beyond that, you also would like, you also need to focus on conversions. So yeah, you could have a ton of people coming to your website from Facebook, but are they converting? So let's say you are driving um, customers to an ebook, and we have a social media ebook coming out in a three in a couple of weeks. Um, you know, which you, which I'm sure you all will find quite useful. Um, and so when we drive people, you know, we'll post both both it both on Facebook and Twitter. And I'm just going to use those for right now, just to um, just to keep it simple. But if we notice that more people coming from Twitter are converting and actually downloading the ebook well chances are that 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 means that twitter is more valuable for us in terms of conversions and converting website visitors into leads um, and so you need to look at those conversions um, on your website um, you know coming from each of those social networks to really determine you know who are you know which are better leads um, do better leads come from twitter do they come from facebook linkedin etc um, and then what it really comes down to, and of course you can look at all the metrics you want, um, but what it does really come down to is customer pref preference. Um, and you definitely do want to give your customers um, a choice. They should be able to reach out to you, you know, via email. They should be able to call you, live chat you, um, and of course reach out to you on social networks. Um, and so, and you can tell again a lot about that by by engagement. But for example, we get a lot of support um, questions on Twitter and on Facebook, but not so much on LinkedIn. Or Google Plus. Um, so we know that those two networks are very important for us as far as um, support is concerned. So businesses have conversations going with customers all the time. These discussions reveal important information. Um, the fact that your customers spend hours on Facebook every day or use LinkedIn to get industry re relevant recommendations. If you're unsure, um, talk to your customers, ask them, maybe send out a survey to see what um, what social networks they're most um, they're most likely to engage with you on. Um, surveys are a great way to find out this customer information um, and really gain valuable insights into who your customers are and where where they're spending their time. Um, industry synergies. Um, so you also have to think in terms of your industry. So certain platforms are geared specifically toward the B2B community, such as LinkedIn. Um, other platforms are more targeted to retail, such as Pinterest. Um, and then you also, there's also very niche social networks. So for example, iSalesman is a specialized social network for sales professionals. Uh, you know, you, there are, there's new social networks coming up every day. Now, if you've got a very targeted niche market, um, chances are there is a social network that supports that market. Um, you need to really find out what these are and a simple Google searches can bring those up for you. Um, Mashable also is a great place to, um, Mashable is also a great way to stay up to date on all the new social networks coming out. Um, and so, you know, if, if you're an interior designer, House is a great one for you. Um, but that's going to be very specific to designers, architects, interior designers, etc. Um, that would be, of course, no place for GreenRup to be. Um, so it's really in evaluating um, which social networks are, um, and especially these niche social networks, because the more niche you get, um, that's where your audience is. Whereas Facebook's very broad, so you can target anyone and everyone on Facebook. Um, but you know, the hows is 
going to be specifically people that are looking for interior designers or looking for architects. So here are some key takeaways. Um, content and inbound marketing are bigger than ever, and more companies are shifting their budgets to support these efforts. Um, my advice is always to stick to the big four until you can really hone in on your niche. The big four, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Google+. Um, but don't forget, again, like I said, um, about the social networks that might be best suited for your business, such as house or iSalesman. Um, you need to go to where your customers are. Um, and and I mean, in creating buyer personas and developing buyer personas um, and gaining valuable customer insights, you know, using surveys and other market re research techniques are going to be really um, important in, in evaluating this. And this is really something that you are. I mean, it does take time, but it's very important to do so to set a solid foundation for your social media strategy. Um, because, like I said, it's not about quantity. It's about quality and it's about reaching the right people. N most businesses do not have unlimited resources and unlimited time to spend, you know, eight hours a day on social media. Therefore, it's so important to hone in on what's right for you. Um, so, for example, businesses looking to reach certain demographics such as women and teens will need to continue to expand their presence on visually based social platforms like Pinterest and Instagram. Um, Instagram is becoming huge. Um, Instagram is so great for visual, for more visual brands. Um, and, and it's definitely something worth looking into if you, if your brand is incredibly visual and, um, is, and is very important, um, and can tell a very visual story. Um, the more people who see and share your content, the more inbound links you attract and the more brand buzz you build. Um, the more inbound links you earn, the better your organic search rankings. So again, the more active you are on these social networks, the more engagement you're going to have. Um, but of course, you have to remember that this content needs to be engaging. And if you have questions about, you know, creating a good content marketing strategy, um, you know, I really encourage you to refer to my last webinar um, about creating a, a compelling content strategy um, and developing and kind of going doing a content roadmap. Um, and, and so that you constantly have an ongoing flow of content on the social networks that you choose um, to publish your content on. Um, because again, the more engaging your content, the more people are going to share it, like it, the more people are going to see it, the more people are going to visit your website, the more chance you have to convert those website um, visitors into leads. So now I'm going to kind of open it up for questions. Um, so I'd love to hear so what some of your biggest challenges are. Um, you know, we can explore some solutions. And then I also want to let everyone know that we are uh, launching a Green Rope Social Media Quick Start Package, um, which will help you set up any of your social media platforms, kind of determine, you know, based on industry research, which platform is best for your business, um, and then consult on social media strategy. Um, so now I'm going to open it up to you, and um, please feel free to ask me any questions you have regarding um, that particular, um, um, this presentation. So, Kurt, um, is there a plan to include Google Plus in the GreenUp system? Um, we are currently working on our Google Apps integration. Um, Google Plus is kind of a hard one um, to, to integrate with. Um, you'll notice that a lot of social tools don't actually have the ability to post on Google Plus because they like you to actually log into the system. Um, for now, we are just focused on LinkedIn. Facebook, Facebook pages and Twitter, um, but we are continuously, you know, looking at other networks to get involved in um, and kind of seeing what our developers can do to make that integrate integration seamless. Um, and so we will, all, of course, keep you updated on all of the new social networks, you know, whether it be in Instagram, Pinterest that we're planning on to integrate.
All right, I am here for any questions you have as far as selecting your, um, and then of course, even if you want me to give you, you know, show you some live demonstrations, um, I can do that as well. So go ahead and ask any questions you have. So I don't, I'm not seeing any questions come in right now, um, but I can show you um, a few examples of, um, I mean, I guess I would like, I mean, my, my question to you, and if, you know, please feel free to respond is which um, social networks, if I could show you one social network that you'd be interested in exploring and kind of learning more about right now, which social network would it be? Um, and if you could just type your answer into the questions box, that would be great. And then I can show you kind of a live demonstration of what that particular profile um, should look like. All right. How do we set up um, a lead gen for social media? So, Dave, um, this is – so social media is going to generate leads, um, you know, via the content that you develop. Now, there are certain places, um, there are certain applications that you can use um, to create Facebook forms, um, you know, sign-up forms um, and all of that. Now, the, the best thing that you're going to do, you know, to create – to to, for lead generation via social media is to share compelling content, perhaps an ebook, offer something that will drive traffic to your website. Again, this is going to be where you're going to want to offer something of value to get them to your website and so that you can track those conversions. Um, so one of the websites I really like, um, and this is kind of a industry secret, but one, but a pretty cool tool and I will show you this right in here, if I can pull this up, is Woobox. So Woobox is a free tool, and you can actually create forms and, um, and custom tabs on your Facebook pages. Um, and so I would all take a look. Um, if I were you, I'd definitely take a look at Woobox. Again, there is um, there is a free version of it. Um, you can create custom tabs um, so that you can have custom forms. And we do have the ability in GreenRope to create Facebook forms. So if you go into, um, if you go into your your green rope account and you go to your sign up forms you'll see down here sorry I've got a lot of forms here you'll see Facebook pages and forms this is where you can actually develop um, your own form for your Facebook page um, and you'll want to include this and um, I'm not authorized in this group but it's, it works the same way as our sign up forms and then what you do is you can create um, a tab really easily in WooBox and just imp and just embed that form right onto onto that tab that's a great way to do some lead gen um, using Facebook. Uh, what are some companies who are doing well across all networks? Um, I mean, a lot of the big brands I think are doing really well. Uh, L'Oreal is huge. I think Old Spice does a brilliant job um, of engaging socially. Um, you know, I think Chevy also does a great job. Virgin America is probably one of my all-time favorite brands to engage with. Um, they are not only, um, you know, I just, the other day I tweeted about Virgin America. Um, they tweeted back to me and then they followed me. Um, I think that they are one brand that is doing it so right. Another big brand that I think um, kills it on social media is Inc., um, Inc. and Fast Company. They both, um, Fast Company has a great um, Instagram account. 
Um, and this is kind of more obscure and more niche. Um, but uh, the ASP World Tour, which is a surf tour, um, actually makes use of not only Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Pinterest, but they also make use of Snapchat. Um, and Snapchat is a as a platform that uh, allows you to send um, you know pictures that are only available for a short amount of time. And so they'll send, um, send snippets to their followers of live surf competitions, pictures of, you know, famous surfers where they can actually sign on the picture. Um, so it, it, so they're doing it really, really well. Will there be a way to, in the future, to post comments to LinkedIn groups? Yes, we are working on that. Um, we are working on that uh, integration. We're going to make the LinkedIn um, the LinkedIn integration a lot more robust. Um, it is LinkedIn likes to change their API a lot, um, and so it is a little bit of a struggle to stay updated. Um, but we are going to be integrating a lot more advanced features. Great, Barbara. Yes. So. Dave, his question is, my question is putting an opt-in form on my Facebook page. Yeah, I would absolutely do that. We have one on ours. Um, so if I go to our Facebook page here, you can see, and this is a form that we built on Greenrope. So you can see newsletter here. And you can see our opt-in form. Um, Marsha, totally understand. It's definitely a new um, Google Plus is a new um, is a new beast, uh, but it is incredibly important. Um, and and I'll, and I'll actually go into um, Google Plus because I think that that's actually an interesting one to show you um, how it works. Um, okay, so David, um, it looks like Facebook is limiting who sees content that I post. If I pay for ads, they show it. Have you noticed this? Um, we have not really noticed any um, issues as far as our reach um, on Facebook. We've actually, the more we've been posting, um, we've actually noticed a lot more engagement. Um, and so I would just say, you know, putting a form on your Facebook page is going to be a great way. And then just be consistent with your posting. I would say post on Facebook, um, you know, once a day. Um, you'll notice that the more you post, the more likely you are to get engagement. And the more people engage, the more likely it is to show up in your news feeds. Um, I do think that um, Facebook ads are incredibly valuable. Um, but I think the Facebook ads are much more valuable for the B2C business versus the B2B. Amanda, um, yes, my webinar on context, content strategy is available. Um, if you go to our past webinars page on our website, um, you'll be able to see um, all of our available webinars there. Um, so now I'm going to just move this over to the side here and kind of show you a little bit around Google+. So when you log in, you'll see that little plus Alessandra there. Um, this is going to take me to my home. So I can see here, you know, any any pages that I follow um, kind of, oh, excuse me, um, you know, get an idea of, you know, all the content people are sharing, etc. Here I've got any notifications. So I can see who added me in their circles. And then I've got notifications here, people to add. This kind of tells me who I should be adding, um, etc. Um, so now let me go back over here and I'm going to go to, and you can also filter out posts by who's in your circles. So now if I go over here, I'm going to go to my profile. You can see this is my personal profile. Um, I've got 140 followers. I can see 9,208 views. Um, you know, I've got my cover. Um, I can see in my circles who has me in their circles, any of my posts here. 
so you can kind of get an idea here of what I've been what I've been posting. I post a lot of our um, a lot of you know the articles I write and the content content. Now if I go to about, I've got you know story my taglines. Um, I talk a lot about my work here. But what I was talking about earlier, and this is what's going to be important, is contributor to. So here you can see all of the blogs that I contribute to. And I, and I actually do need to update this myself. But if I go and do this edit here, you can add custom links. Well, you're also going to want to connect all of your social profiles to your Google Plus profile. But you're also going to want to add custom links. This is what is also going to help your picture show up with your content so that it knows that you're the author. Um, so you can see here I'm a, a current contributor to Business to Community. And, and like I said, I do need to up the, update this. Um, you know, I haven't updated it in a month. Um, sometimes if I like a post a lot, I will actually post that particular post in here um, because, the, again, I really want to reinforce that the authorship. Well, let me see if you guys have any questions about any of that. Um, and go ahead, you know, keep asking questions as I go along here. Um, so yeah, so de definitely optimize um, optimize your uh, your Google Plus profile. Um, you know, even if you don't post on it that much, just having your Google Plus profile is going to be really important. Now, if I go in here, I'm going to go to Pages. See here, manage this page. And get your page, you can, that's to create a page. And so you, I can see here that, you know, I, I need to go ahead and verify this. Um, verify the the page here. Here are some insights, so I can see how many views, um, actions on posts. So there's been a lot. There's 600% more engagement, 44% um, new followers, um, because we ourselves have just been kind of ramping up our Google Plus, um, our Google Plus presence. Now, so you can see, okay, I've got my business there. Great. So now let's actually go to the Google Plus page. So I can see all of our posts. And we post pretty much every day. Um, we've got our own small business solutions community, which we just launched yesterday, actually. And then if I go down, I'm going to go here are communities. And now you can see communities I moderate, any invitations and communities I've joined. And if I go into any of these um, communities, so let's go into small business marketing. So this is what's cool about Google Plus communities, is over here on the side, they categorize it. So let's say I wanna go and say social media marketing. Let's go see what people are talking about. So maybe once I, you know, finish this webinar and we post it on our website, you know, I might want to go in here and share this webinar or my content marketing webinar, um, you know, with all the users in this particular group. Um, you can see that there's a lot of people in this, um, you know, a lot of members. So if I post in this particular community, everyone, 8,496 people, um, that is my that is my reach. Um, I have the potential to reach that many people with one post. So you can actually see in here that this was a post that we posted um, posted today or no a couple days ago um, in, right in Green Rope. So anyone who visits this page will now see that. So then I can go in if I want and plus one this post, but I'm acting as Green Rope right now, so I don't want to do that. But if I was acting as Alessandra, um, I'd want to go in you know, plus one this post and then share it on my own um, personal profile. Um, now I'll kind of pull up here and see if you have any more questions. Um, yes, so David, yes you can. Um, you can set up multiple businesses under one Green Rope account. So if you see here, I can go into, you know, okay, I've got my business here. I can go all pages. 
So I am, um, you know, I've got admin rights to each of these pages. And if I want to go get a page, I can do that here as well. I'm sorry, my internet seems to be a little bit slow right now. But yeah, you can, it works very similar, similarly to, to Facebook in that regard. You can have multiple pages under one account. Um, you can switch ownership, um, ownership between accounts, which is also really cool. So, um, and then you can have as many managers as you want. Um, so there's a lot of ways to, um, to manage your page just like you can on Facebook. All right, let's see what other questions. Yes. Um, so now I can also take you to LinkedIn um, just for the last five minutes here. And of course, just keep asking any questions you have. Um, and I will get to those. Um, but this is what a couple of things I was talking about is this little flag over here. If I hover over that, I can see, oh, 11 people viewed my profile. Um, I can also see 99 people commented on a discussion that you followed in CRM Expert. So I commented on um, I commented on a, a particular discussion in there, and I can see if anyone else has commented on that. So I can go back and revisit my own, um, you know, my own my own comment. Um, I can also see here who viewed my profile. You know, it gives you a really good idea of who's viewing your pro um, profile. You know, it tells you, you know, what industry, who they actually searched for me, etc. So um, that's that's also pretty cool um, to be able to have that sort of um, that sort of those sort of insights. Um, and, and it'll be great for expanding your network and building your connections. Um, I'd also like to show you the company page. Hold on here. Interests, that's where all your companies, your groups are going to be. So I can go here to our company page. I can see all my updates. You get pretty and you get good, you know, good analytics on all of them as well. Um, and this is great just to, um, again, um, you know, for B2B, this is going to be important. It's a way to, so people can view your company profile. Um, you're not going to see the type of engagement that you would on some of the other social networks, but it's really important to have, especially if you're B2B. Um, to join groups, you First, are going to want to search here, but then you can also see, okay, I'm actually a member of 54 groups. I thought that it was 50. Um, but then you can kind of see what are the what are the newest discussions, and I can chime in on any of these discussions if I'd like to. Now, to find, let's just say you're, you know, in the ski industry, um, I can see here, you know, Mammoth Mountain Ski Areas, Ski and Attractions. So you've got um, Ski and to Sea Professionals, so groups. Um, so once you type in your search term, everything that's relevant to that particular um, search term will come up. And so you can see here, okay, so let's say I work in the ski industry, I'll probably want to join Ski Industry Professionals um, if that's, you know, a particular um you know, that is, that's going to be important for your, for building your network. Let me go here and pull this up. Um, all right. That's, this is, I mean, this was definitely a brief overview, um, you know, just kind of reinforcing the importance of social media, um, you know, and how important it is to be a part of these networks. But I also really want to express how important it is to focus your social media efforts. Um, don't try and be everywhere at once. Um, you know, it's, like I said, if, 
most of us do not have unlimited resources to be spending hours a day on social media. So it's really important to focus in on where, you, where you're going to receive the most ROI. Um, and for most, um, I mean, and I, but I absolutely say that Google Plus is a must, must, must. Um, and that's really for the SEO benefits, but it's also a great way to, um, and it's not even so much getting in touch with your consumers as much as expanding your relationships with other people in the industry. Um, Google Plus is a great way to build partnerships. Um, LinkedIn, of course, B2B. Um, Facebook and Twitter, all around great platforms for both. Again, it's not so much B2C or B2B, it's P2P, people to people. You have to think in terms of connections with individuals because that is what you're doing. No matter, because the fact is, is even if you're, you know, you think you're engaging you know, with Green Rope, yes, you're engaging with a brand, but you're also, you're engaging with myself, with me, um, or our social media coordinator, you know, who's making the effort to search for terms, to engage in conversations, but she herself is a person, just as you are a person. So you really want to focus that relationship on, um, you know, it, on those more personal relationships, whether, you know, it is B2B or B2C. All right, if those are all the questions, um, I'm gonna put my email right in the chat box here. So go ahead and email me if you have any questions about your social media. I'm more than happy to take a look at your current profiles. Um, and if you have, I mean, I can definitely give you some recommendations as well. Um, and like I said, you can contact um, any of us. And by the way, we are, um, launching our new social media module um, and social CRM. So we're going to be um, having hosting a webinar on how to use that particular feature um, soon as well. Um, and that's really exciting and will be really great for all of you um, to really boost your social listening. All right. Thanks, everyone, and have a great afternoon.